In this video, we're gonna make our first network request. So actually get the data from the repository, which uses our retrofit service. We're also gonna talk a little bit about state flow, uh, mutable state flow, shared flow, mutable shared flow, uh, live data, mutable live data, and the preferred data structure, in my opinion, which I'm gonna explain why in this video, the preferred data structure that you should be using in your view models to hold your data if you're using Jetpack Compose. So I just described a whole bunch of different data structures, a whole bunch of fancy Kotlin data structures, but we're gonna be using the simplest one of them all, which is part of the Compose runtime uh, library, or just part of the Compose library. And I'm, again, going to explain why I, you do not need any of these fancy data structures, you just need mutable state. So first, let's go into our view model, and I wanna show you the basic pattern that uh, everybody follows, or if you don't follow it, everybody should follow for you know getting data and then you know sending data to your UI or creating an observable that can be observed in your UI. Let me actually first go into recipe list fragment and let's just delete the on create function. We don't need that. All right, so the, the pattern that everybody uh, mostly follows, and if you don't follow it, you should follow it. This is what it looks like. You have private value, you know, you would have, let's say this is a recipe app, so I'll call it recipes. This would be a mutable live data object, a live data object. This will be a list of recipes because that's what we're getting from the API. And I would just set that equal to a new mutable live data object. And let me just uh, get that recipe import. So notice a couple of things. This is private, and I appended a, a underscore to this variable name. So the the fragment or the activity has no way to see this. This is a, a private. It's a private value that can change. So now, how do we get the data to the UI or to the fragment to the activity? Well, you create a second value just called recipes. So no underscore. This is of live data type. So it's it's read only. It can't be changed. It's strictly read only. This is going to return that recipe recipes, that recipes list, so recipes. So then in your activity or your fragments, when you want to observe that, let me just actually do it so you can just see an example. If I wanted to observe that, let me just go into the view here, I would do, you know, view model, view model dot recipes dot observe, I would get the view lifecycle owner, uh, open this up to to the result of that observer. This would then be the recipes, just pass that as the Lambda, and then boom, inside of here, I would you know set this to my recycler view list or whatever, if you were you know doing this classically, this is how you would do it. So whenever you were doing a request, let's say I do the request in the init function, um, oh, it needs, to be, uh, it needs to be a suspend function, so we'll use the view model scope, dot launch and then you would just do you know value result equals the repository repository dot search i would pass the token so the token will do page equals one query equals chicken just to you know do whatever kind of a query it doesn't really matter and once i get that result i would do underscore recipes dot value so recipes dot value and then set that equal to result and that that is the the go-to pattern that is the standard pattern for getting data from your repository getting data from your use cases whatever and observing it in your ui that is the the go-to pattern that most people follow and if you don't follow it this is the one you should probably be using so that's totally fine and if you look at any of my older courses that's generally the pattern that i follow it's pretty solid nothing wrong with that you can't fault that solid solid pattern to follow so recently there's been all of this you know all of this hype about these new data structures um, obviously kotlin flow you have state flow which is newer newer mutable state flow shared flow uh, mutable shared flow all of these kind of new fancy data structures and i've heard i've seen people saying oh uh you know live data will be deprecated only people are only going to ever use state flow or flow or blah 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 and although these data structures are great, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, you don't need them for every scenario. Essentially, they're just, they're, they're, they do the same thing live data does and more. Take state flow, for example. All this is, is a flow. So if you know what a, a Kotlin flow is, it's a flow with extra parameters. It's, you know, a state flow never completes. That's one of its, or it's a, it's a flow with extra properties. So like I said, just a, a second ago, you know, a state flow never completes. That's like one of the properties of this thing. And if you read through this, it just tells you about those properties. So really it's, it's a flow and it just has extra properties. Of course, you can also apply operators to it, which is which is a good thing, which is a, a great thing, kind of like RxJava. 
So, you know, if you look at any of these shared flow, state flow, mutable shared flow, mutable state flow, they're just flows with extra properties. That's all they are. So for simple scenarios, like the one that we have right here, where we're just simply getting data from a network, we're not, we don't need to apply any complex operator, concatenate, switch map, map. We don't have to do anything. We're just getting the data, setting the data and observing it. There's no reason to use these more complex data structures. The only time you need these more complex data structures is if in your use cases or in your application, you need you know, a data structure that will emit all of its stuff to all of the subscribers and you know wait, wait until every subscriber has got it to emit the next one. That was one of the properties of a shared flow. You know, it, it, unless you need those things, why use a more complicated data structure when something like live data, which simply just displays the data is is perfectly fine. So I'm sure you get the point that I'm trying to make here. I'm trying to say don't use uh, complicated things if you don't have a complicated problem to solve. Just use the simple things that are available to you. And we are actually gonna take this a step further and make this even more simple because we're using Jetpack Compose. There's actually a special data structure that's built, a special observable data structure that's built specifically for Jetpack Compose. And this data structure is called mutable state. So if you just type, you know, mutable state in Google and search compose, you'll come up to this definition. So I'm just gonna read this really quick and then talk about what it's all about. So it's a mutable value holder where it reads to the value property during the execution of a composable function, the current recompose scope will be subscribed to changes of that value. So basically the takeaway there is it's it subscribes to some this thing this this recompose scope thing and uh, we'll emit values to that okay fine when the value property is written to and changed a recomposition of any subscribed recompose scopes will be scheduled so what that means is when a composable is recomposed or when it gets rebuilt it will it will then um, make sure to update any of the other compose scopes that use that value. So if the value, it's it's kind of like a thing that's built perfectly for compose. If that value changes, it will cause recomposition of any of the composables that are using that value. And then one last thing here, if value is written to with the same value, no recompositions will be scheduled. So great little optimization thing there. If the value changes, but it's exactly the same, or the value is set, but it's exactly the same, no recompositions will be done. Great little optimization. So a good way to think of this mutable state sort of data structure is it's kind of like the perfect data structure for observing with Jetpack Compose. It's literally built for it. It's simple. It doesn't have any you know special properties like state flow, shared flow, any of those special flows. You you know you obviously don't have the same functionality. You don't have operators. You can't do you know do unique things like emit to all of your subscribers and wait until all of your subscribers get the value it just emits values it just is something that it's observable it's built for compose it's optimized for compose it's simple. So coming back to our example, we can now simplify this a little bit. Our live data thing was fine. Like this is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this, but to optimize this for compose, we can change it. So I'll do, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna get rid of the private identifier. I'm gonna get rid of the underscore because we actually only need one data structure here. Call this mutable state. So mutable state, and this will just be a mutable, we're gonna call this constructor mutable state of, and then you pass a default value or a, a starting value. And that starting value is just gonna be an empty list. So I can just say array list. You can also say, uh, I believe list of, which is a Kotlin thing. Just add that in there. doesn't matter. All, all we wanna do is just initialize an empty list. So now when we go to set this, this will be exactly the same, just recipes.value and then set it to the result. So the fragment does change a little bit though. So, so of course we can't just observe this like we were doing with live data before. So we're gonna have to delete that. But the good news is that this is gonna be simpler. It's gonna be simpler than that implementation. So now when we have this, this mutable state object, how do we get the values from it? Well, we need to go inside of a composable. So set content, that is inside of a composable. I can say value recipes equals view model dot recipes dot value. And now anytime that that recipes list changes, this will also change. And any composable that uses this value will be recomposed. So just to show you that it's working, I'm just gonna write a for loop here and we're gonna print out all of the recipes that we get from the network. So for recipe and recipes, and I'll write log D. And I'm actually gonna create a constants file with this tag while we're, while we're in need here. So go into, uh, let's go into the main package directory, go to new package, 
create a package named util and then create a new file in here called constants. So just a new Kotlin file called constants. And I will create a value called tag and just set that equal to app debug, app debug. So now I'm gonna use that for the log debugging stuff. So come in here, now I'm gonna import that. Make sure to get the one from the package that I just created. So that's the one. And now we just want to, I'll print out the title of each recipe. So recipe.title. So that's, uh, that's how we're gonna be observing data from our view model, from our request to the API. So let me run this and we expect to see the recipe titles printed out to the log. All right, so there we have the app running on the screen. Now let's open up the log, go to logcat. And now I can filter on app debug since I added that, that constant. And there we go, we have on create view called, it should be 30 times since the pagination is, the page size is 30. And you can see all of the different titles coming up for those recipes that we got from the network. So hopefully I shed some light on, you know, how to observe data in your view model, how to update those observable data structures in your view model. I told you how I feel about kind of all these new fancy flow data structures. I think they're great, by the way. We're gonna be using flows in my next course in the use cases because they're, it's, a more, there's more, it's a more complicated scenario. Here, it's just, it's too simple. Why, why would we use these complicated data structures that have properties that don't get used? It would be like, it would be like buying uh, a, a car that was also a submarine, also could like go bore underground, but the only thing you used it for was driving to the grocery store. That, that's like the comparison. It's like, wh why? Why don't I just use the simple one? So hopefully you uh, understand the, the point that I was trying to make. Also, there's nothing wrong with live data. There's nothing wrong with this mutable state data structure for composables. I think it's awesome, actually. It's super simple. It's optimized for compose. So that's what you should use if you're using compose. And uh, yeah, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to leave your engagement. Go down there. Remember, this is part of a free course. I don't make any money on this course and I do it full time. So the least you could do is leave me some engagement. Leave a like. Do not forget a like. Very, very important. Thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.